here at Phipps Conservatory with Romero the Corpse Flower. Welcome back. Thank you, Brian. It is good to be back. Well, you know, good to be here with you. And, you know, uh, we were here uh, three years ago, I think, when you uh, bl originally bloomed, and now you're blooming again. Is, is that correct? That is correct. It was three years since my last bloom. 2013 is the last time I bloomed, and baby, I am back. You know, I, I thought it was like, you know, a once-in-a-lifetime thing with you corpse flowers, you know, but only three years? Only three years. Well, typically it can fall from three to seven years is when we're supposed to bloom but you know what I just like to say I'm so much cooler than all those other corpse flowers I'm coming back as soon as possible you're anxious because I remember you know when you last bloomed in 2013 I mean it was a media frenzy I mean you had crowds around you everything I mean how do you how, how do you handle that kind of pressure well you know it's not easy being me but I like to channel the great power of my namesake, the real George Romero, who's oh, yes. a Pittsburgh legend, part of Pittsburgh culture, famous for Night of the Living Dead. And you know what? I always admired him and how he handled all the mass hysteria and media and praise and worship. <laughs> and I just channel that power and that's how I handle it. Very him. good, very good. Now, now, you are called a corpse flower. Why? Well, I am called the corpse flower because some people think that this smell that I emit when I bloom smells like rotting flesh. Now, that may be true, but I like to call it, I don't know, rustic, musky, manly. I use it to attract my pollinators. There is a reason that I smell like this. So it may smell like rotting flesh, but you know what? You gotta do what you gotta do. You have a very, uh, a, a very feminine voice, but are you yourself male or female? Well, Brian, that's kind of a personal question. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you know what? We're friends, right? We, yes. I yes, I, I think we're friends. You know what? Let's go there. Let's talk right, about let's it. Let's do it. I am both male and female. Oh. Now, this is really unique, and it's something that, even though it's different from a lot of other plants, I've really come to own it about myself, and it makes me different. So I have both male and female parts, and typically, I bloom at two different times, once exposing the female parts for pollination, and once exposing the male parts for pollination so that I don't self-pollinate. I mean, isn't that awesome? That is, and you know what? Y you, that is great. I mean, you just keep right on being you. You've got my full support. Just uh, don't try using a public restroom in North Carolina anytime soon. <laughs> Where are you originally from? Well, I'm originally from uh, the rainforests of Sumatra, Indonesia, but I have some cousins from Western PA. You might oh, yeah? know them. Yeah, they're pretty popular guys. The skunk Cabbage, uh, Jack and the Pulpit Plant, both from Western PA. And they've been raving about Pittsburgh forever oh. and ever. And I thought, you know what? I'll get them to shut up and I'll try <laughs> something new. So I'll come out to Pittsburgh and I gotta tell you, I'm loving it. So it was a skunk cabbage. The skunk cabbage. There's yes. something about smell in your family, I, I think. Is, yeah, is what you know what? It runs in the family. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> so here you are just about ready to burst mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I know how you feel I, I feel the same way after I eat at Burgatory uh, <laughs> but I mean what's the time frame here I mean how, how much longer do you got before the you know you're, you're uh, bursting out all over yeah well I like to keep people on their toes I mean I messed with the staff here at Phipps forever I think they were like will he bloom won't he bloom will he turn into a leaf will he actually bloom I like to be unpredictable I like to keep people on their toes but my growth is slowing down the past few days it has slowed down significantly so that means that I am gonna be blooming quite soon and we're predicting wow. it's gonna happen sometime this week but like I said I never want to give anything away I want to keep people on the edge of their seats and that's when the, the, the smell happens that's when right the smell happens so what is what is the purpose for that smell that uh, you're so well known for well the smell as I said is meant to attract my pollinators and that's especially important because the pollinators that I need are flies, beetles, insects that are typically attracted to rotting flesh. So if I emit the smell of rotting flesh, they're attracted to me. See, it's kind of like trickery. Yeah, no, this is good because, you know, I'm always looking myself for new ways to make friends and influence people. Uh -huh. And previously, I had not considered the aroma of rotting flesh. Yeah, what is so, that you're wearing? Axe body spray. <laughs> so now, what happens after this? bloom that we were so anxiously anticipating
happening here at Phipps? Well, you know, this is sort of a soft spot for me. I'm sorry if I get a little emotional here, oh, but right, right. the bloom only at lasts around like 12 to 48 hours, somewhere in there, and then sadly I collapse. Oh, and I God. Rot, and I'm sorry. It's just. The bloom is like my moment, you know? It's when yeah. everyone comes out to see me and it's like social hour and everybody's here. And you know, last time I believe George Romero himself was here. Yeah. Me. It was awesome. And so once I collapse and fade away and go dormant, I mean, it's just sort of a lonely time. Oh. Yeah. But that's okay. I mean, then, you know, then I eventually will go back into leaf stage where I'll get really tall, consume more energy, and then bloom again. Yeah. Well, you know, Pittsburgh's own Andy Warhol was famous for saying that everybody gets their 15 minutes of fame. Mm -hmm. But now, after the second bloom, you'll have racked up 30. There's t-shirts with you on it in in the gift shop. Mm -hmm. So, like, how do I achieve that level of acclaim? You know, I'm kind of like a D-list media celebrity right now. I'm kind of working my way. What advice do you have for someone like me? I'll tell you what you do, Brian. This is what you do. You drop off the map for three to seven years. Hide in your apartment. Don't talk to anybody. Let everyone think that yeah. you are gone, you booked it, you're out of town, and then one day you just open that door, walk right out, people will go nuts. You know, I kept thinking Elvis was going to do that. Yeah. And really, I, I do want to say, you know, some of my best friends are plants. Oh, really? You know, I really feel that, you know, we, you and I, we, we, we relate to each other, you oh, know, a little bit. Great. Well, you know what, I, I thought I felt something to you. I was like, this guy... We, like this we, guy. we, I think, are just both the perfect blend of attractive and offensive. I have to assume that you've seen Little Shop of Horrors, of or at least aware I've of it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? The stigma that that movie caused, <laughs> I cannot tell you. <laughs> You know, there may be some work for you in the, the cinema field. I think any horror movie where there's like, you know, the alien pods or anything like that, I think. Are you are you able to have a drink? Is that... Uh... Oh, no, vodka would kill me. Oh, I'm sorry. That was probably rude of me. Well, but, that's uh... all right, Brian. Like I said, you know, I, we're friends now. You know, it, it, it's probably going to kill me, too. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.